We invited professors Berlant and Stewart tonight to engage in a public conversation about the role of affect in shaping publics, worlds, and atmospheres. To frame this conversation, we asked Lauren and Katie to reflect on the contradictory affective attachments that mark our historical present, to consider how ongoing investments in what Lauren has referred to as neoliberal good life fantasies, or in the American dreams of which Katie has written, operates alongside a continuing, if not increasing, fascination with the collapse of these very fantasies, an arguably perverse attachment to the possibility of failure and to nightmarish scenes of horror, threat, and objection. Let me begin with defining some terms in my schoolmarm way. <laughs> in my work, the historical present is that which has made itself present as a situation of crisis that simultaneously individuates and collectivizes, shapes appetites and imaginaries, and induces activities from scavenging. What's going on? Where's that feeling of loss? And where's that feeling of potential coming from? To world making. What's available to hold me in the world? Whether in the episodic encounter or in a concept or scene to which I return. So when Bobby asks how the lived experience of the present is defined by crisis, he's pointing to the problem of the present as a transition within our own attachment to an unstable object the encounter with which is the condition under which the historical present appears to us, first as a sensory crisis or disturbance, a threat to the reproduction of life in which loosely knotted subjects proceed in incoherent responses to a world that is at once in disarray and yet not politically unpredictable enough. And I think that paradox is a really important paradox of the sense of a contemporary crisis. Like, those of us who are, would consider ourselves bio, subjects of biopolitics understand the ways in which the world is not unpredictable enough. And at the same time, there is a, a common consensus that the world is in a crisis of its own reproduction. So thinking about what we mean by world and how the proliferation of worlds and the relation among them is itself what's at stake. And the question of crisis is part of what we'll be talking about today. Mm. Attachment, therefore, is a psychoanalytic concept related to unconscious or unwilled fantasy investment, an affective concept tracking attachments to situations exemplifying forms of life, a concern of ideology critique by way of the selling of normativity, and a phenomenal practice of being an object thrown into the world with other objects. To politicize attachment requires attending to and proposing continuities among multiple subjectivities, thinking that they're organized in relation to the same object, scene, or problem, even if the object, scene, or problem that we think is collectively organizing us is really a magnet for heterogeneous forces and fantasies. And that's a really central thing to my work, which is that what an object of investment is is a placeholder that magnetizes all kinds of fantasies to it. And the more powerful that placeholder object is, the more heterogeneous the fantasies that will be attached to it are. And so people start to think that there's continuity among them because they have relation to the object. But the fantasy investments in that object are going to be quite different and often just, you know, eventuate in senses of political betrayal and non-continuity when you thought that my, our, our common recognition was the scene of our actual likeness to each other. I want to just say a few things about um, thinking about attachment differently and the problem of the political, to some extent. So for me, the problem of attachment, I was thinking, is both to compose attachments and to attend to them. And that means thinking about how they take place and how they carry force, how they form up into something. And that means us, academics, writers, um, all kinds of people, the problem of composing attachments and attending to them. So um, this, just ta this takes a lot more than a hermeneutics of suspicion, obviously, or any kind of common language of predefined terms and objects that are made simple and fixed so that everyone can recognize them, but only in outline. For me, writing is a way of accruing concepts through a slow training uh, as trainings in attention and in care to subjects and modes of being that exist in solution that is as affects and percepts. 